Hello and welcome back to the Reapers and we are in our brand new gazelle uh, which I'm very excited about. It's a very cool little uh, chopper and it's a scout chopper. It's small, it's light, it's agile uh, but it's also powerful as well. It's obviously armed with a series of weapons. There are four versions we get. A Lima, a mic, a minigun and what's the other one? Strahl, the Mistral at air version. So it's a pretty cool thing. Um, absolutely tiny compared to the other choppers. Small compared to a Huey. Small compared to a... A50 is very small compared to an MI8, so I'm very excited about flying it. And first impressions inside, pretty awesome. I like how the doors open, that's kind of a bit weird, but cool. And there's like perfect visibility as well, which is so important in a helicopter. Some of those helicopters you can't see crap in, so absolutely cooly wooly. Right, anyway, the first thing we're going to do is the cockpit um, tour. So we want to start on, you can sit in uh, either the left or the right chair, the right chair being the pilot, the left chair being the gunner, I suppose. If I press one, it comes to the pilot seat. If I press two, it goes to the gunner seat. So should we start in the gunner seat, Stahl? Yeah, sure. Although well, technically it is referred to as the commander seat. The commander seat. Ooh, I'm a commander. Okay, uh, now the usual thing we do is essentially wrap from far left and we wrap around the cockpit explaining all the dials until we get to the far right. First thing I notice is it's very simple, really. Simple and modern. And it's, it seems a bit ahead of its time, uh, designed in the late 60s, introducing the early 70s. Unless this is a seriously modernised version, then uh, this seems extremely modern for that kind of era. So it's all very impressive stuff. Um, pretty cool. Right, Star, um, should we start? Is the first thing on the left the, um, the weapon stick on the left? Yes, uh, the two little switches to the left of that are actually not implemented. Right. So on that stick, you have controls for the camera and the weapons. Yep. So the first red cover is for your lasing button, then you have two hat switches, uh, which are to focus the image, to adjust the gain, and the symbology and picture brightness. Roger. Then the other big red cover is to fire your missiles, and underneath are two toggle switches, which will toggle your symbology and your screen from uh, black to white. And, you know, white hot to black hot and such. Oh, white hot to black hot, Roger. Uh, before we get any further, I should say at this point, that there are going to be small differences between each version. There's four versions we get in DCS, and we'll uh, we'll go through each version uh, in due course, and we'll explain the differences. We are in the mic version at the moment. Okay, where do you want to go next? Um, the commander's that's control stick. That's oh, non-functional by the looks of it. Yeah, there's nothing there. Um, let's, see, let's have a look at the screen. Roger. Underneath you have uh, a contrast rotator, a main power switch. Next to the main power switch is just a power light, and the brightness control on the right. Yep. Third off to the right, you have uh, a little panel where it says A, Ali, and M. Mm -hmm. That'll be your power for the for the sighting system. Uh, to the right of that, that's your mode for the infrared system. Okay. Um, then you have where it says AC, VP, and sorry, pill and ass. That is your master mode for the. Sight Underneath the little triangular knob is your zoom selector, then you have the stick that moves the camera around. Um, you have a camera centering switch and the uh, IR and normal vision mm -hmm. uh, toggle button. Hang on, Shaw, I can't move the, the slew, I can't move that around, can you? Is that something I'm doing wrong? Uh, it doesn't move for me right now either. Okay, so on the right of that video, what's that? The um, just above video. That's that's your toggle button for uh, IR and normal vision. Roger, and then bottom right? That's, that's the button, the thingy above is to center the camera. Roger, understood. Now we've missed something underneath the screen, if you can see that, a multi, several multi switches. Yeah. Where are we going over that later? It's kind of hard to see. Yeah, um, those are your main controls for your pylons. Basically what we have uh, on our output stations right now are HOT3 and the tank missile. So that's, um, they have a tandem heat warhead, the range of about 4.3 kilometers. Would and so the key to the left um, is just the main mode to give them power and some, you know, test mode. Okay. Adept in the center, I'm sorry for my French pronunciation, I never learned to speak it, is off. Yep. And the rest is just uh, indication lights and test lights. Understood. And to the right of that, you'll see another big black knob. That is your pylon selector, and the zeros in between are just safe position. Okay, pylon selector. There's four pylons, is there? Yes. Okay. So you can carry four missiles per sortie. Interesting. That's they're really hard to get to those knobs, by the way. 
yeah, that's that's why you actually want to bind um, the cycle pylon. Let me have a go with that quickly. Yes, I see what you mean. Okay, stop. Uh, do you want to move on to the pilot seat next, or? Yeah, I should do. Right. Oh God, where do we start on this little panel of ours? Well, I would recommend the R W R, very top left. Okay, that's a nice little feature. I like that. Yep, the only helicopter in the game that actually has that. Um, it's pretty straightforward, you know, whatever is closest to you is the most, the highest priority target. Uh, and in the top left you have a brightness uh, knob, uh, audio knob in the bottom left. And then at the bottom right there is an on-off and croc switch. The croc function is, as far as I understand, basically an elint function, where it remembers where it's been painted mm -hmm. by what kind of radar, so you can draw a radar map afterwards. How advanced. But but it is not implemented, and neither are the page and marker buttons. Roger, understood. Right, do you want to go down? There's a blank a blank box there, and then a test. What's test? Yeah, uh, it's the autopilot uh, test, if you mean the big yellow cover. Roger. And underneath you have your gyro control panel. Gyro control panel, so what's that for? Navigation? Um, well, basically you'll just turn it on and leave it at that. There's not really much to do. Right, so that's that. Where do you want to go next? Um, well, if you look to the right of the RWR, you can see a warning light panel. Mm -hmm. It's pretty straightforward, although the instructions are French abbreviations, so some of them might not uh, be easily understandable. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Straight to the right of that, you have a very important gauge that is our vertical velocity indicator in hundreds of meters per minute. Okay, so 100, so if we were up there, that's increasing altitude by 100 meters per minute. What's our threshold for VRS on the descent? Um, the cell is actually not VRS. It's oh, not really? Support. Oh, yeah. um, I'm in love, Star. <laughs> Honestly, that's probably not realistic. Um, even a light helicopter like this should be able to VRS, but I've tried. I've not managed to get it to VRS. It's not a thing. Nice. Very good. Very good. Okay. Um, right. Are we going right again to the um, ADI? Sure. Yeah, it's a pretty straightforward ADI with you know slip gauge at the bottom, yep. bank indicator, and everything. Um, to the right of that, airspeed indicator. Also pretty straightforward. Uh, if we move back to the left to the second row, we have our backup ADI. Hang <laughs> on, so let me have a look at this. So this is the speed in kilometers per hour with a maximum of 300 kilometers an hour, which is about. 180 miles an hour, which is about 160 yeah, knots. Although, it's pretty fast, pretty damn fast. No, realistically speaking, you're not going to reach that. You're probably going to go into retreating blade stall before you even reach that. Roger. So, I don't know, 250-ish or something is probably going to be the max, if not less. Okay. The Gazelle is a pretty slow helicopter. That's the main downside to it, I'd say. Okay, we've got the um, the uncaged button and, and set button here for the... Main artificial horizon. We've got backup artificial horizon here with what appears to be a standby button. Uh, yep, the same unlock set. Okay, and then if we go to the right of that, watch that style on the right of the backup ADR. Uh, that's your barometric altitude. Oh, barometric altitude in meters? It basically works like a clock. So the long finger, you, if you look closer, there's two fingers. Mm -hmm. uh, the short finger would be kilometers, the long finger is hundreds of meters. We've got a QFE here, let's have a look. Yes. Or is it? Hang on, just let me try. It's bottom left of it, there's a black knob. Yep, so we're going to set our QFE there. Uh, as standard, it's set to the base that we start at, so that's fine. Right, um, where do you want to go now, Star? HSI or? Um, yeah, sure, to right of that, you have HSI with two needles. So the big needle, the hollow one. I would be for your Nadir, which is your main navigation system. The thin one is for your ADF. On the top right of it, you do have a distance gauge as well, which helps. Right, so the thin one is for the ADF, automatic direction finding. The, are you sh uh, the, the thick one, you're saying, is for the um, main navigation, yeah. you, so it's not a course line then? Um, no, you don't. You don't really need a course line. I mean, it helps to have one, but it's not in the system. Okay, right. So that's something to learn. Obviously, you've got the 12 o'clock position here, and it's obviously a 360 degree uh, distance here to the next uh, point of interest, waypoints that's probably going to be, but we'll see that in the navigation yeah. tutorial. Okay, that's fine. Lovely HSI. Uh, what have we got on the right of that? I can't... Uh, rotor speed? Uh, so that's the torque gauge. Um, whenever you reach 95% torque, 
uh, you will get a little warning light that starts blinking at the bottom of it. Yep. And when you actually reach 100%, you do need to... First of all, it will go solid red light. Mm -hmm. And you will have to lower your collective, otherwise you will break the engine within 10 to 15 seconds. Roger. Uh, when you enter that area, you will also get a different warning light that's at the very top right of your dash, says Alarmi. Roger. Okay, so that's something I've got to look out for in the Gazelle. Is that just pushing the collective too high that will do that? For the most part, yes. Also, mm -hmm. if you pull Gs that can alter the torque to an extent. Roger. Okay, so right. Um, do you want to bounce back to left under the backup HDI? Mm -hmm. So that would be your lighting panel. You have oh. your position lights on the left. Yep. Um, your anti-collision beacon to the right. Mm -hmm. So the the formation light. So the nav lights actually that is. Um, if you put the switch down, it's fixed. It constantly lights up. Uh, the CLI position would be blinking. Um, for the anti-collision light, if you put it to normal, it will just light up at full brightness, and at is attenuated. So you can then use the knob next to it to set the brightness. Yeah, Roger. Underneath you have uh, console lights. Uh, they're both turned on with the one switch in the center, and you can set the brightness separately. Yeah, like good. Like the main and the center. Okay. Uh, so we'll have a play with that once we've get the um, uh, let's get the battery on standby for a second. Right, let's go right. Uh, looks like radio altimeter, so that's a useful thing, and it goes up to five hundred meters. But it looks like things. A bit above that. Um, so you do have your on-off switch at the yeah. bottom left. You just roll that. And at the top right, uh, you have a different thing you can turn. You, that will move the little triangular carrot at the bottom. Yeah, got it. Which is just altitude one. Yep, right. Okay, gotcha. Yep, that's a useful feature. Um, right, where do you want to go now? Down to these switches? Yeah, sure. Uh, so the first one's not actually implemented, but I believe yep. that would be the wiper for the <laughs> co-pilot. Uh, the second one is also not implemented. The third is Peter power. Then you have your hydraulics test. Uh, the next is your master arm, actually. So that's important to memorize. Yep. Right. Master arm is underneath radio altimeter. Roger. Right. Temperature gauge. What's that? Uh, that is oil? exhaust temperature. So it's in the hundreds of degrees, I guess. Uh, yes. Okay. No, actually, sorry, that's not excess temperature. Excess temperature is at the bottom. Um, so that's oil temperature then, I guess. Oil temperature. Roger. Understood. Uh, the gauge, next gauge on the right is something Q comb. Yeah, the fuel gauge. Oh, fuel gauge. N n tens of liters, so you can have 450-odd liters. Okay, we've got the vo battery voltage there. Okay, then we've got some more switches we can go through. Yep. Well, actually, I think we missed two things above. Oh, um, the, the, the one swing, single switch is your pilot windshield wiper. Does that work? Uh, yeah, it does, yeah. You have two different speed settings for that as well. And to the right of that, you do have a selector knob um, for the main artificial horizon, where it um, takes from basically from where it takes the mm -hmm. navigation information. Yeah. So this would be actually your camera. Mm hmm. Uh, VHF is your ADF, and DOP is your Nadir. Cool. Okay, that's An fine. additional useful thing, as long as you have that on DOP, your your EDI, the course and, and glide slope lines will actually show you a, basically hover line. So as long as it's centered, you're hovering. If you try to get into a hover, you can just chase down the lines, basically. Okay, we should do that in the navigation. Right, where do you want to jump to next, Stars? We've already been over... This one on the left here, which is a hot missile control. So this controls the pylons, as we've talked about. There are some buttons above it. No, some lights. Missile pret, tier mm. order, and default. I guess we'll go through that in the... Um, in fact, there's quite a lot of stuff above it. Yeah, but most of that's not really important, to be honest. Yeah, a so Let's move to circuit breaker panel on the right. So is that what it is? No, it's something else. Awesome. Um, you lost me. Um, so, from the hot missile control, we go to the panel on the right. Oh yeah, okay, that, that is a radius selector, only the first three of those actually work, so you can click those and turn the knobs for the wall. Right, so you've got VHF, UHF, and FM. Okay, yep. I noticed in the Huey you can do navigation by FM, I wonder if we can do that in this. Okay, that's something we're going to have to look at. Okay, so we'll go through the radios more at some point, and the panel below doesn't appear to do anything, would you agree? Um, if you mean the other radio panel, no, yep. it doesn't. 
Okay, that's fine. So we've just got three knobs here, which we'll go through at some point. Okay, next on the right, uh, what have we got here? We've got engine exhaust temperature, I see. Yeah, I think above that we also missed uh, that row of switches still. Uh, the first one would be your yep. trim, trim power that is. The next one is a general electrical system test. But then you have two warning lights. They're going to be interesting when we start this thing up. Mm -hmm. And finally, your power switches for the battery, the alternator, which is basically an AC generator, and your generator. Yeah, I've, um, right, lovely job. Right, let's head down to the next panel. I can't work out what this is all about. Yeah, so you have an auxiliary fuel tank switch. This aircraft does have a second smaller auxiliary fuel tank if you really do want extra range. Although, with wow. with weapons, that would put you significantly above uh, allowable takeoff weight. Okay, well, um, where's, that, where's that switch? Uh, right next to the exhaust temperature gauge. On the right or below? It says, it says R sub. Oh, to yeah, right. right, got you. Okay, fine. Uh, then the R conv, that's a convoy tank switch. I'm frankly not sure what that is. It's not implemented, so it's not that important. Roger. Uh, next, you have your sand filter switch, uh, your magnetic brake, uh -huh. which is basically your trimmer. Yeah. And two buttons, which I'm also not quite sure what they do. They're your alternator and generator rearm. I'm not sure why they would need rearming, but. Okay. You know. Roger. Down and left, we've got starter. Um, yeah, that would be your engine start switch. To the right of that is your fuel pump switch. Mm -hmm. uh, then we have your standard chronometer. Mm -hmm. And to the right of that, that is your RPM gauge for both the turbine and the rotor. So the turbine is the outer scale. Mm -hmm. uh, with the long finger, it's uh, thousands of RPMs. Mm -hmm. And the inner gauge is hundreds of RPM. On the rotor. Right, that makes sense. All right, let's go south. What have we got here? What on earth is this? That is your autopilot panel, so the big cells are just the main power, the gauges above are your autopilot indicators, and then you have the power switches for the autopilot channels, so that's pitch, roll, and yaw, and to the right of that, the alt and V would be your autopilot mode, so that's altitude and speed hold modes. Roger, right, so we'll do an autopilot video to check that out, that's fine. Uh, we've got a knob on the right, this is UV lighting rotator, what the hell is that? Yes. Nightmare. Well, if you look, um, if you look a little bit above you, you will yeah. find black boxes, which are UV lights, and you have um, paint on the on the instruments, which will start to glow if you shine UV light on it. Roger noted. Oh yeah! Wow, it works. Oh, pretty star. Yeah. Isn't that nice? Okay. Just, I, just wait until we turn the uh, ooh, instrument lights on. I'm starting fine. to light this helicopter. Right. Okay. Right, now we get into the nerdy stuff. Um, center panel, um, some sort of uh, UFC or something going on here. Um, if you mean the thing with the like telephone-like buttons and mm -hmm. several knobs, that would be your Nadir system, so that's your main uh, nav system. Right, so we're, this is where we input our waypoints or whatever and stuff like that by the sounds of it. Yeah. Um, as far as I know, this is only partially implemented since this is a system that is still in active service and there's a lot of it that's classified. Right, so we'll do we'll do a Nadir navigation uh, video then where we'll look at this and see what we've got, but okay, okay, yeah. go through that. Right, so we've got a VHF radio, nice and compact and small. Yeah, also only partially functioning. If you look to the right, that knob doesn't do anything, for example. You can pretty much just set the main modes. Yeah. And the frequency. Okay. Same pretty much goes for the FM radio underneath. It's just main modes and the radio channel selector. And those main modes are mostly not really functional. You just have AR, which is off, test, which is test, and everything in the middle is basically. Okay, we'll see what we've. We'll go through that properly. Is um, because which one's which? Is the VHF is is the top one. What's the one below it? Uh, that's the FM radio, yeah. and at the bottom you have the UHF. So the FM is, you can't press all those buttons I notice, you've just got two no. dials that you can do. Um, where's VHF? So the, the next one below is VHF? Uh, UHF, the bottom one is UHF. Yeah, those sorry. buttons you can actually press, just right. that, uh, you can see. VHF, FM and UHF and okay, yep, yeah, you've got buttons we can press there, so we're gonna have to go through that at some point. 
Um, where do you want to go to? Oh, God. Looking underneath that collective is really hard. Oh, there we go. Just trace the collective. It's off yeah. anyway. Roger. Right. Is, the, is What's the dials at the bottom? Is that V? Oh, ADF. That is your ADF. ADF. Yeah, so you can set the... Um, the dials are actually um, three-stage pyramids. So you can, yeah, you know, set hundreds, good. tens, and units. Yeah, I see. Um, then you have your standard uh, settings, you know, modes of antenna, ADF, and test. Yep, yep, yep. And then top you can set left or right frequency that you want to fly towards. So you yep. could have, you know, the classic first outer beacon, then inner beacon, and such. Yeah, sure. Oh, has it got two? Has it got dual beacon? Oh, it's got two ADFs. Oh, lovely. Yeah. I love a plane with, with dual ADFs. It makes it so much easier. And it's got a switch to switch between them. Yep, uh, must have it somewhere. Yep. There it is. Beautiful. It's top center, yeah. Nice, good system. Okay, we'll go through, we'll do an ADF video later on to show how this works, but that's cool. Uh, right, uh, we've got the collective, obviously, which is, I never really know how to explain a collective because it's not the same thing as power, is it? It's kind of... No, it's not. It's it's um, prop pitch, basically. Yeah, so I'm moving the collective now. Prop pitch, yeah. That's, which kind of is power in a way. It's it's, it's the up and down power of the prop, but I oh, know I'm not going to try and explain that because I don't really know it. Right, on the collective we've got some stuff. Uh, what have we got here? We actually missed a little panel next to the radios, by the way, which would be our uh, countermeasure uh, panel. Countermeasure panel. Right. Mm -hmm. So we've got a lot of lights and stuff. So you, cell, you only get flares. Uh, the bottom switch would be the on-off switch as well as uh, dispense speed switch, so you have slow and fast dispense. Then the CC yep. sequence is single or sequence. Uh, G plus D is left or right, or if it's centered both. So I don't know what yep. the actual French words are, but one thing you'll need to remember in the in the Cassell is D means right, G means left. It will be interesting for the camera later on as well. Okay, right. So that's something we'll go through at some point. Counter measures panel flares. Okay. Is there programs? There's going to be programs, isn't there? Yeah, but it's pretty simple. By the way, have you tried using the pro the the countermeasure programs in the um, Vigan and found that they just don't work, or is that just me? Um, Vigan countermeasures are awkward to be honest. I've never liked them much. Okay, that'll do. Uh, right on the um, collective, we've got tings here. Uh, uh, yes. The left. So that would be your landing light mode. Mm -hmm. So that is off again. Vario is Vario mode. I'm not a hundred percent sure what that's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And the top one is on. Okay. So from what I've seen, the both top ones are bo are just on. What exactly the difference is, I'm not sure. Roger. And I've got a um, non-functional red one there. Yeah, you actually missed something in the middle. Mm -hmm. It's a black boat switch. Oh, yeah. That's actually to lower or raise the landing light. Ah, wicked. Searchlight. Look forward to that. And on the very right, next to the red thing, the big yellow cover, that's your flare spin. Ping flares go right, wicked. That looks good. Um, we've got the control stick. We might as well do before we go backwards and then up. Uh, so what have we got here? We've got on the left autopilot slave. What does that mean? Just autopilot on and off? Uh, no, that toggles the autopilot to turn wherever the camera is looking. Yeah, got it. That's fine. So then on the right, the red button. That'll be your standard autopilot on and off button. Yep. I haven't actually set that in the controls. Have you set that? Um, not sure. I'll have to check. Okay. And then we've got something on the um, stem magnetic brake button, yeah. which is trim, isn't it? Exactly. That's your trimmer button. Um, so and it's basically f like like a force feedback stick. It just leaves the stick there. Then. Roger. And I'm guessing the triggers are around the front where we can't see them. Uh, yeah. Then underneath the magnetic brake, you have the auto hover toggle, and even further down, the pilot wiper button, which, you know, is like the windshield wiper, except it's uh, only on as long as you hold. Okay, that's fine. Nice little control stick there. Nice. These French vehicles are very clever. Uh, right, behind uh, the collective, we've got something that's going to be almost impossible for me and my weird track yeah, I have to get to. It's also not really implemented. Okay, That'll yeah. be your IFF panel. Okay, that's not implemented. That's fine. Right, uh, so now I'm going to go up, and where is the first configurable bit? Uh, what have we got here, Star? We've got a lever on the right that doesn't work, I can't move that. We've got a lever on the mm -hmm. left saying vol, that does do something, I think. Uh, okay, what are you looking at? Uh, okay, uh, so the... Yeah. Um, 
So the levers to your left, uh, there's three of them. The black and yellow one is actually not implemented. That'll be your fuel cutoff lever. Roger. Uh, the just yellow one is your fuel flow lever, and mm -hmm. the really long red one that hangs down to basically next to your shoulders mm -hmm. is your auto brake. Auto brake. What does an auto brake do? Rotor brake. Not that? auto. Okay. What does that do then? Well, it holds your rotor in place so it doesn't, you know, swing while you're on the ground or something like that or turn. Right. Now I can't actually press it. I'm pressing it, but it doesn't do anything. Oh, no, you yes, don't it does. press it. Yeah, I see. You I'm need to drag it. it. I'm dragging it. Dragging it. Yeah, basically, just um, just imagine it like an e-brake in a car or something. Love a good e-brake. Right. Okay. Okay. Very good. Very good. Very good. Now we're gonna go back and up. And we've got a knob. Uh, that's probably your formation lights yeah. uh, knob that you're looking at, um, and on and off switch behind that. Yeah, and then. That appears you to do, be, yes. You do also have a floodlight slightly further to the back. It's the big cylindrical thing. Oh, At yeah. At the very back of that, you have an knob that you can turn, which turns it on and sets the intensity. And also, you have a normal or attenuated mode switch somewhere behind it. It's kind of hard to see. Okay, very cool. Nice little chopper so far. Anything with Mishtar? Uh, just minor things. I mean, in the center to the front, you have your magnetic compass in case the other one fails. Oh, yep. Just a backup compass. Yep, Roger. God, he's hard to see, isn't he? Yeah. Also, you do have an outside temperature gauge to your top right if you look up. Oh, hello. Outside temperature is 20 degrees Celsius. Mmm, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. Very good. Very good. And I believe that's about all then. Right, so that's a pretty cool introduction to the chopper. I hope that helps, and we'll see you later.